Let's see where the money was spent as we review the Liberty Interest Hearing Report. First and foremost, the spending of public funds was deemed illegal. Look at Pennsylvania School Code 610. The undisputed facts are stated in the request by the petitioner, and it shows the district government did not discipline or terminate this employee. Therefore, the district had no legal requirements or jurisdiction rights to spend money on this hearing. But since the rubber stampers authorized it and the report was created, let's dig into it. Number one, why did the district pay for two attorneys from our solicitor's office? Do we really need two solicitors for a simple hearing? Oh, and the hearing officer. Make that three attorneys suckling off the public. In my opinion, I find the vote to host the meeting the most telling. The five voted down a hearing with any hearing officer other than King Spry. But as long as King Spry was the firm to be assigned, all the rubber stampers, all five, all of them changed their votes and flip-flopped on hosting a hearing, approving it. King Spry wrote this report, so keep that in mind. To me, this was a major tell that something was screwy. Number two. If you're going to have a hearing, a due process hearing, invite the witnesses. Invite the other parties. How about inviting all the jurors? This just makes common sense. Take a look at the email. Here is proof the solicitor failed to invite all the jurors and all the witnesses. Take a look. The student that was told to remove his clothes to be searched and the seven other students that were searched that day alone were not invited. Look at the report, line item 17, and the invitation. See how they contradict each other? This is the first evidence of a railroading. In the hearing, take a look at number 38. Principal Howland, a district staff member, gives her opinion, but does not testify to the actual facts surrounding the searches. Nor did this hearing allow for the students to testify. This is all documented in the report. There's another tell that something is being a bit screwy. Number three. This was a very one-sided hearing. Now it is common for the administration to believe the district staff over other parties, but here the students weren't even allowed or invited to give first-hand testimony. This is very suspect. Here are the students' rights to due process. Was this to protect and hide the actions of these two staff members that were involved in conducting these searches? Okay, let's take a look at number 15 on the report. Since the search did involve the removal of some of the students' clothes, isn't that a strip search? Why did they have to go into a private, empty room if all the students' clothes were going to remain on? The question with this hearing is jurisdiction. Since the board, the government, never disciplined or terminated this employee, the district doesn't have the right to spend the money on the hearing. If an employee was upset that his safe space was violated, it belongs in another jurisdiction. When he said felt were appropriate, including impugning his job performance in front of a parent, end quote, the district should have saved the taxpayers a massive amount of money and sent this employee to the proper jurisdiction. This district shouldn't get in a personal discussion of opinion. Discussion of what happens triggers an employee that's on the employee. The district shouldn't pay for a hearing every time a parent shares an opinion on how a search should or shouldn't be done or a vulgar tweet was or was not sent. Number four, this one should be enough to show how much of a farce this was. All we have to do is read line 24. Line 24 talks about my board meeting comment. Read line 24 and then read the board minutes. They're posted on the district website. Report is about sworn testimony and statements of fact. Yet they're in direct contradiction to the district's transcribed minutes. Does this make these statements perjury? I was surprised. I mean, why make stuff up in the hearing? Under oath, with sworn testimony. If they're willing to lie under oath to protect themselves from transparency, what else will they do? They already know the five on the board will rubber stamp everything they do. 
the administration and district employees lie, like was proven here, and the government rubber stamps them. Who is overseeing our government schools? Who is protecting our children? This was a waste of money. It was just another attempt to gaslight the public. It wastes our money on solicitors, attorneys, and the stenographer. The hearing was not in our jurisdiction, therefore spending the money was illegal, according to Pennsylvania School Code 610. Oh, let's do one more. <laughs> There's so many. But here is one more. Line 41. The superintendent references school policy 317. Well, that one's about weapons, not a vape. And he also references criminal code 6321. That's about sexual images, illicit. This is about hand gestures and vulgarity. And the superintendent fails to apply policy 815 that publishing vulgarity using the district computers is illegal. This appears to be an administration getting caught blowing smoke. Not for the first time. Remember the appraisals, the bid documents? How about the cost of the new building leaving out the interest? That was almost $2 million a year of interest. In number 30, the petitioner admits he published vulgarity and admits he removed it when he was educated to the vulgar meaning of the vulgar hand gestures, the ones that were demeaning to women. So in conclusion, a staff member escalates the hearsay evidence to host a dragnet search of several students on one of the last days of school. At least one parent was upset to hear that his son was detained and subjected to an aggressive search that had two district staff members in an empty room with the student being asked to take off some of their clothes. The district has been circling the wagons ever since because the rubber stampers failed to do their job and provide oversight to the people they were elected to oversee. All it took was for two board members to honor their oath and listen to the students to realize we need to protect our students' rights. These regime of rubber stampers are not happy, and so be it. They can be mad, but this report is filled with false testimony. They spew lies, and they hate, and they fear the transparency. All the parents wanted was for the policies to be reviewed, and all I wanted was for the district to adopt a simple Miranda-like warning to turn these things into teaching moments. We need to protect our children. The parents should be notified before the district leverages our children into becoming unprotected informants. Well, there you have it. A well-written report that contains proof of their willingness to make stuff up.